Hey everybody, so this is Blender 2.8 and it's uh, the most usable version of Blender so far, which means it has a lot of new people trying to use it. There are a couple of common blind spots, so what we're going to do is we are going to talk about one in particular, materials. I've seen a lot of people struggle with what a material is, how to use a material, all that jazz. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Just a very, very basic introductory lesson about what the heck a material is. Um, if you're already past that phase, don't bother with this. You're not going to learn anything much. We are modeling here, but that's just to have something in our scene. Um, we're not actually going to be teaching you how to model, and this isn't worth knowing how to model anyway. It's just a, uh, a very primitive book. But regardless of how primitive it is, we would like to give it some, some existence. We'd like to color it, maybe give it a cover page. How do we do that? We have to use materials. So the number one thing you have to know about materials in Blender, they are not related directly to the meshes. This isn't a material. Now a mesh can have a material, or a mesh can have a hundred materials, or a hundred meshes could have the same material. So they exist separately and then we link them together. With that in mind, over here on the right are a whole bunch of tabs, all of these guys. Um, the one you need is the one down here at the bottom, material. I'm not sure why they decided that both of the red icons desperately needed to be red orbs, but it's the one near the bottom, not the one near the top. And here you can see an empty materials panel. Yours might not be empty, sometimes they come with the default material already embedded inside. But even if it is empty, all you have to do is click a material. Kabloom. Here's a material. This is the default one that you normally get when you start up Blender. And you can see all, it's got all this really lovely stuff going on here, none of which you care about at all just yet. What you do care about is this base color. This seems like an easy thing to change, right? Um, it's not changing anything. Well, this is actually the viewport's fault. Blender's default view is for modeling purposes, so it's intended to show you all of the topology of your meshes. And that means it's not trying to show you things like shading or textures or color, but there are a couple of optional alternate viewport modes, like this one and this one. So just change to one that actually shows what we're trying to show, and uh, then you'll be able to see it. See? No problem. Now the page is still gray. As you can see, there, there are different materials. If we come over here to the page, it also has no material. We can select a material. Now it is also purple, and they both change at the same time, because the same material is on both. Let's go ahead and create a new material. We'll call it page, and we will make it a different color. There we are. So now we've got a book material, which we will call book, and a page material called page. There we are. Pretty easy stuff, right? How do we get it to be an image? Hmm. How can we make this have a texture on it? Maybe we want to paint a texture here in Blender, or maybe we want to import a texture. But either way, we certainly can't just use a color. Well, you see this little dot? Click on it, and you have a whole set of options. Look at all this stuff. And what we'll choose is image texture. There we go. We can then use this to pick out an image. I've got one here called turtle. Boink. There's our turtle image. You can see that it's really, really badly stretched, but it exists. Now the reason it's badly stretched is because this was originally a cube and I didn't bother to UV map it afterwards. So it's just got some arbitrary UV mapping. If we pull here, yoink, and come up here, bloink, and then come down here, doink, there is going to be our UV image. See that? This is the leftover UV map from back when this was just a cube. What we'd like to do is re remap it. Pretty easy stuff. So just hit A to select all of the faces on your mesh, and then come up here to UV, and then I usually use Smart UV Project to start with, and you can see that we now have a Smart UV Projection of a sort. If we wanted to, we could pick a specific face like this one, and we could just change over here this particular mesh until it fit our, our image so that we, uh, we have the right image for the book cover. There we are. Beautiful book cover. Easy as pie, right? Um, notice that the rest of these faces still have random stuff attached to them, so we could try to come up with an image that has a more complicated setup so that, you know, our, our front panel and all the sides and stuff are all 
different parts of a single image, but another option here is to simply create a new material. We'll call this material um, cover, or uh, we'll call this binding. So here's the material called binding. Uh, but you can see that what I've done is I've actually overridden it, so now there's still only one material. So what we actually want is a book material here. Then we'll hit plus, and then we'll choose the binding material. And now this mesh has two materials attached to it. Oh, what? How is that going to work? Well, right now all of the verts in this mesh are assigned to the um, to the book. But we'll go ahead and change this so it looks different. We can just hit disconnect here, and then we'll make it uh, say bright red. That, that ought to tell us, right? You can see there's no bright red stuff here. So all everything is currently assigned to book. So what we can do is we can select everything except for the top cover and then select binding and hit assign. And there you go. Easy enough, right? So that is a basic lesson on how to do materials in Blender. This is super, super basic. I just want you to understand the basics of what it is. Obviously, there's a lot of optimization you can do here. There's a lot of complicated stuff. You can build your own node networks. But if you're just getting started, you don't need to worry about that. Just do this. It's pretty basic. The other thing to, to note is that when you have separate meshes, you can combine them. So if we select this mesh and then select this mesh and then hit Control J, they become a single mesh. And notice it added in the page's material. So this object here still has the page material binding. When I say that the meshes can be bound to the different materials, that includes them keeping that binding even when you merge them. So if you start to try and merge things together in order to save out on having fewer materials, make sure that you get rid of the ones that you're no longer using, or you'll end up with a mesh that has a thousand materials on it. That's it. Have a good one.